Hello friends, welcome back to the Nerdy Filmmaker and today we're going to go through all of the gear that I've used throughout 2021. Let me start off by saying that when I got an iPad for basically one project, I had to get it for one project because I couldn't find another one, I didn't realize how helpful it was going to be for my YouTube channel because, I mean, look at that. I can start and stop from my iPad. If you haven't, if you have a Sony camera and you haven't checked out Monitor Plus, uh, do it. So the past two years have been interesting, but um, it's also offered me a chance to explore a side of filmmaking and content creation that I guess I never thought I would. I've really, really enjoyed it so far. So I want to be able to share with all of you kind of what are the products that I've been using over the past two years. And maybe if you have any follow-up questions on any of them, you can just drop them in the comments. But let's start off with what are the best investments I've ever made in my life? The Sony a7S III, which is what you're watching through right now. I kind of did a whole unboxing of it. I'll put a link to that in the description. That camera has paid for itself and quickly because it is a workhorse. It creates such beautiful images and it's compact. And sure, it has its shortcomings, no XLR inputs unless you get the kind of attachment piece for it, but that's very expensive. But as a whole, it works beautifully in low light. It's got great image stabilization. And all in all, it's just such a beast. Uh, the only kind of photography that I do are actor headshots these days. So those don't need to be super high resolution. Uh, so the photo kind of setbacks don't really bother me at all. They actually create much more manageable files. So I think the a7S III is the bee's knees and is the perfect camera for me. Now a camera wouldn't be a camera without its lenses. And I have so far amassed a collection of three lenses. So first off, I, when I first bought the camera, I bought it with the 16 to 35 f 2.8 G Master lens. This is an obscenely expensive lens. This was like $3,000 on its own. And at the time when I got it, it's because I thought I was going into real estate video. And then I realized, I don't want to do that. So since then, I've often questioned whether or not I dropped a whole bunch of cash for no reason, especially because there's the 16 to 35 F4 at like half the price. But I recently shot a project where I used this lens literally 75% of the time over a 10 day shoot. So if you need something that has the flexibility of 16 to 35 millimeters, and you need the shallowest depth of field you possibly can at that point, and you can drop $3,000, then absolutely do that. Following that, I got this beaut because as I said, I do a lot of headshot photography, uh, but also for any kind of more shallow or compressed images, I got the 85 1.8 Sony lens. And the images that come out of this, even at completely open at 1.8, are so sharp. Combine that, that shallow depth of field and sharpness with the Sony's autofocus um, eye recognition system. <sighs> if you're looking for an incredible portrait lens and you want it to be that zoomed in at an 85, that's the one. I got a third lens, which is actually the one that you're watching right now. And that is the 28 to 70. I think it's 28 to 70. It is the 28 to 70 Sigma lens. This lens actually, I was not on my radar and I had gone to the camera store to, to buy either the 24 to 70 Sigma, which is a beast, or the 24 to 105 F4 um, Sony lens. And uh, both of them had drawbacks for me. But then when the person there suggested taking a look at this guy, uh, it was perfect. It actually ended up being a perfect lens. Do I miss it not being able to go to 24? Not really, because I've got this guy. Really, the benefit to this lens was that it was not only significantly cheaper than the other two options, but it was also significantly lighter. And because I use a gimbal, which I'll show you in a second, so often uh, it just takes the stress off the motors and it makes the whole experience much faster. So that lens has been so good. All right, moving on from lenses, I've got this little little guy here. These are accoutrements for the camera. This is a small rig cage uh, for the a7S III. Uh, I really like the build of this, like it's really comfortable to hold and both the top handle and the side handle like this are really great and then you know your lens goes through there. So there's a couple of drawbacks in the experience with this so far. One is that these screws come loose so easily, seemingly without even using it. It just, I tightened this like a few days ago and everything's loose again. There are a whole bunch of magnetic um, hideaway Allen keys which are dope. You can use that to tighten it and then just plop it back in. 
So it's a quick fix. It's just frustrating when you're like in the middle of shooting something and this thing's coming loose or this is coming loose. The second thing, and this is really only particular to this one lens, is that normally you would put your camera through here and then tighten it on the bottom. Well, this thing doesn't actually fit through even with its lens hood off. So I have to take the lens off, put the exposed camera on here, tighten it, and then put the lens on if I'm using this guy. So, what was that? I think it was my iPad vibrating. So there you go, small rig. The second thing I had, the aforementioned gimbal. I never made a video about this because I didn't consider myself to be a very um, experienced gimbal user. So I kind of thought like making a noobish video on that would be a waste of time, but to be able to do all those cool kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> movements, uh, kind of walking movements without having the shake of your body, even like the, the, the A7S's stabilization is great, but at a certain point, if you want to have smooth transitions, you need a gimbal. So I got the uh, Ronin S2. I got that one specifically because it was lighter than the old model. Also, all of the parts lock so that it's not all loosey-goosey inside your bag. It also means you can balance each axis one at a time very easily. Um, and then finally, on the mounting spot over here, there's a little wheel to help get kind of like incremental adjustments. There's a lot of other things that come with this package, like a follow focus, clip on and um, a transmitter for your image to a phone so someone can monitor on their phone. I don't really use any of those things. I think it's also just because every time I've used this, it's been such a high pressure situation that I don't really want to spend the time setting this stuff up. But as a whole, it's very good. Sticking with camera, I'm gonna show you this nice little pouch I got here because ooh, uh, this is my uh, filter kit, right? So. Uh, I'd made a video on ND filters, link in the description, uh, and on step up rings. And the only thing that I haven't included a video for that I, that I have in my arsenal is uh, actually a pro mist filter. So right now attached to that lens, I have a pro mist filter, a quarter pro mist filter. And what that's gonna do is bloom the highlights and smooth everything over a little bit. All right, enough about camera. Let's move on to sound. I suck at sound. So basically the, the easier equipment I can get, the better. Right now I'm wearing my Sennheiser microphone. Uh, I had made a review on this. I probably shouldn't have made a review yet when I, when I made it just because I hadn't really tested it out much. But uh, you know, since then I've used these predominantly for these videos. So I've got my transmitter and my receiver on the camera and my, my, uh, the microphone right over here. Oh no, the wires appeared. There we go. Where did it go? The magic of cinema. I like the sound of this microphone. I think it sounds really good to my uneducated ears. But the only downside to this is I do find that even after all this time, I still get the occasional interference or static noise. And I don't quite know where that's coming from because I've run a bunch of tests. Uh, I guess it could be cell phone interference, but that's why I've put my phone all the way over there and I've taken off my Apple Watch. I put everything there. Now following that, I have two more um, sound pieces to include, and one is this uh, Deity shotgun mic. Um, this is the first microphone I got to start this YouTube channel, and uh, I don't use it so much anymore just because I find the workflow with a lav mic is a lot easier, especially because I don't have, I don't want one more thing set up in my apartment, one more stand, you know what I mean? Like right now you can't see, but I have four lights set up right now and uh, I'll kind of talk you through them in a bit. So just having the wireless lav is so much more helpful. There's nothing wrong with this microphone. It's really, really good. And then the last piece, uh, again, that you probably have not seen, and I recommend this actually heavily for any indie filmmaker um, because it's such a versatile little tool, is the Rode Go 2 receiver, and then there's two transmitters in the pack. And essentially what this does is you attach this to your camera, you plug it in so that it receives the sound from two different transmitters. And those two different transmitters are gonna transmit into a stereo mix. One transmitter is one channel, the other one is the other channel. And so what's helpful for that kind of thing, even if you're just doing talking heads, you can have, let's say, this clip to someone's you know, belt or whatever, and then a lav running up to it, plugging into that. You can use these as labs as well. There is a built-in microphone, but I don't think they sound good. So you could attach that to a lav and then have this guy 
sitting on a boom as a backup track, and this can be run and attached to the second wireless transmitter. And so at any point you have two sources of sound coming in on one stereo track. And so in, in post-production you can split them up into two mono tracks and then choose as you wish. There are definitely downsides to these. If you are curious to know more, let me know and I will make a video on these Rode Wireless Go 2. Uh, super dope is the technical term. And what a cute little pouch, look at this. I don't know why I like pouches so much. I think they just make everything look nice and neat. Now lastly, let's talk about lighting. And lighting is something that I really wanted to start investing in after I got my lenses. Um, because I find myself doing kind of more small little projects that don't require an entire production team. And so having a set of portable lights is uh, very helpful. So over here I have, uh, this is the newer um, 660 Pro, I think, or the RGB. These are the RGBs. And uh, these lights are really, really nifty, right? So these can either, I still got the plastic on the back. What is wrong with me? So these can either be plugged in or they can be battery powered. I do have, I got two uh, batteries to go along with it. Just to show you, plug that in and then there you go. So, whoa, right? Now these come also with uh, little soft boxes for them and barn doors for them. And they can do the full RGB uh, spectrum so they can be colored lights. I actually think they're best used as that because then you don't, whoa! Sorry about that. There we go, that's what I'm looking for, right? Because then you don't have to worry so much about color accuracy and matching with other lights. They do have a little bit of a tint to them if you're using in them in their standard uh, color temperature. They have a slight, I think a green tint to them, but it does from, from warm light all the way up to cool light. I'm trying not to, I don't quite know what the difference between me pointing it this way and that way is. It's still blinding you. They're strong if you're doing kind of talking heads like this, right? So this is only at 10% right now. It is right next to me, but I made a video on the original 660 bicolor lights, but I really feel like I should make an updated one using these. They're portable, they're, they're light, they're compact. Basically all three of those words mean the same thing. Next up, and y'all probably haven't seen this on my channel yet. This is the Nan Light. Uh, 30C, so this is the first version of the light that came out with a new version which I would be really happy to get if any of you want to buy them for me. But I'm just gonna turn this on facing this way first so they don't kill me self. So these as well are also um, not only bicolor but are RGB. So you can do uh, a whole range of colors on this guy. So here we got some nice pink, some tasty pink. These have batteries built in them and they charge actually fairly quickly and you can leave them plugged in if you wanna leave them plugged in. And these are really great for hiding away in spots that you can't fit other kind of more bulky lights. So I've used these before to uh, simulate uh, like kind of like fluorescent lighting in a kitchen. I've used them to, to simulate uh, ceiling lights in a hallway. I've used them to add fill light, to add backlight. Um, I would be using it really to use my, uh, to do this hair light, but I actually, I actually have one of these guys on a stand that you can see, you can see the stand right there. I'm not trying to hide anything anymore, but there is a light right there. It's one of these. Actually, this light is what's adding that yellow light in the background over there. So that's not my actual kitchen light. That's one of these hiding in there. See, I've got friggin' light stands set up all over my apartment right now. I have a little less stands, the better. I just want floating lights. Can one of you, Nanlite, Godox, Aperture, can you invent a floating light, please? We're in 2021, friends, get with it. That's really it. The, the last thing are these Godox VL150 lights that I have. I have one over here that has a big soft box and a grid attached to it, and another one over there bouncing off the wall with a reflector on it to add some fill light. Those technically aren't mine. Those are actually bean ducks, and I would love to give you all a studio tour of bean ducks soon. So uh, look out for that. Put that all together and that's the, the gear that I've amassed over the past two years. And I have been very fortunate enough that I've had several chances to use them and to have them start to pay back. 
um, what, what they cost. You know, I think next step is I need a new tripod right now. I'm still using my Amazon Basics tripod. I've got $6,000 worth of equipment right now sitting on a $50 tripod. That's not safe. That's not safe at all. So that's it. If you have any questions about any of this gear, um, then please leave a comment and I will get to you ASAP. I'm really hoping I have more opportunity to use all of this in the new year. And my question to you is if you have any gear that you're looking to upgrade, what's the first piece of equipment you're looking to upgrade in the new year? I'm looking forward to a dope 2022 full of creation. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Nerdy Filmmaker saying goodbye. Have a great day.